Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to compare fractions. And as you can see, there are four comparisons on your screen, and we're going to go through each of these four in order to get this down. So let's jump right in to number one. And for number one, we have 3 eighths and 13 sixteenths. So the first thing you want to do when comparing fractions, check to see if they have a common denominator. If so, it'll be pretty easy to compare the two fractions. If they do not have a common denominator, we need to find one and rename those fractions. That way, it'll make it very easy to compare when we do have a common denominator. So let's take a look. We have 3 eighths and 13 sixteenths. So obviously we don't have a common denominator there, so we need to find one and rename. And the common denominator for an eight and a 16 is 16. So let's rename this first fraction, and I'm going to do it underneath there where I wrote that 16. Well, I know eight times two will give me 16. So in order to um, find an equivalent fraction, we need to do the same thing to the top. So 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. 3 eighths is equivalent to 6 sixteenths. They hold the same value. So I did not change the problem. I just renamed with that common denominator. The second fraction, 13 sixteenths, already has a denominator of 16. So I do not need to rename or do anything to that fraction. Now that we have a common denominator, it's very easy to compare. And we can see that 6 sixteenths is less than 13 sixteenths, right? 13 out of 16 is going to be greater than 6 out of 16. So let's put our symbol in here. And we can read that from left to right as 3 eighths is less than 13 sixteenths. Another way to think of this problem is you can see on the left we have 3 eighths, right? That's less than half because half is 4 eighths. So the left side is less than half. Now on the right we have 13 sixteenths and that's greater than a half because half of 16 is 8 sixteenths. So the right side is more than half and the left side is less than half. So we can tell by uh, using that strategy or you can prove it by changing the denominators, you know, using a common denominator and renaming. So let's take a look at number two here. We have two twelfths and eight ninths. We do not have a common denominator, so let's find one and rename. So for 12 and nine, your common denominator is going to be 36. 12 times 3 is 36, so let's do the same thing to the top. 2 times 3 is 6. 9 times 4 is 36, so do the same thing to the top. 8 times 4 is 32. Now that we have a common denominator and we renamed, it's very easy to compare. 6 36 is less than 32 36 and let's take a look at the original problem again now 2 twelfths is less than half right because uh, 6 out of 12 is half so obviously 2 out of 12 is less than 6 out of 12 so the left side is less than half and the right side half a 9 is 4 and a half and we have 8 ninths, so we're well over half. So the right side, right off the bat, we could see is more than half, and the left side is less than half. That can also help us compare. But again, we proved the comparison when we found a common denominator and renamed. So let's take a look at number 3. Now, both of these fractions are over half, so we can't use the benchmark strategy here um, with these fractions. So we're going to need to find a common denominator and rename. So 3 fourths and 6 eighths. So we have a 4 and an 8. 
and our common denominator is going to be 8. Now that second fraction, 6 eighths, already has that denominator of 8, so we do not need to do anything. We're going to leave it as is. 3 fourths, okay, we need to think, well, 4 times 2 gives me that denominator of 8, so I need to do the same thing to the top. 3 times 2 gives me 6. So both sides are equivalent to 6 eighths. So both these fractions are equal. So 3 fourths is equal or equivalent to 6 eighths. Let's take a look at number 4. And just using benchmarks and fraction sense, when I talked about the half for numbers 1, 2, and 3, that's a benchmark fraction that we can base uh, different things off of. So when I say the word benchmark, I'm just talking about a fraction we can use to help us through these problems. Now 8 tenths is above half, right? Because half would be 5 tenths. And on the right, we have 17 twentieths. Well, half a twenty is 10. So that one's above a half as well. So we can't really tell right off the bat which one's greater or less than. So let's rename with a common denominator. So we have a 10 and a 20. So our common denominator is going to be 20. Now the second fraction, 17 twentieths, already has that denominator of 20. So we do not need to do anything to that fraction. Now the first one, well, 10 times 2 gives me the denominator of 20. So let's do the same thing to the top. 8 times 2 is 16. Now these fractions are very close in value, but the 17 twentieths is 1 twentieth greater. It's a little bit greater. So let's read this left to right. 8 tenths is less than 17 twentieths. So there you have it. There's how you compare fractions. Use benchmarks, right? Use half to kind of judge where you're at with the fractions, and then rename using common denominators in order to prove your answer. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.